Hey guys, by Rachel Tiffany here. I'm very proud and excited because I got an interview. I finally was brave enough to ask someone because I like to give my people what they want and I got lots of requests for more interviews. So, here it goes. Hi Lauren. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> now, I just want to ask you some questions about your biracial experience. Sure. Um, your, which of your parents is black and Native American, I'm assuming, is one combination which of your parents is white? Well, actually, neither of my parents is white. Oh. Uh, my father is African American. My mother is a mixture of all three. Yes. So she's very, very light skinned. Uh -huh. um, and my father is pretty dark skinned. But it's interesting because her father is very dark skinned, but her mother is really light skinned. So my brother and I are somewhere in between. We're darker than my mother, but lighter than my father. So very cool. Yeah. Okay. So like, what? I'm incredibly interested in like children who have a mixed parent mm -hmm. and then but per, like does your mom identify herself as black? Yes she does. Um, she grew up in Buffalo uh -huh. so uh, she was like the white looking girl in an all black neighborhood and people uh -huh. used to call her Snow and you know all of that stuff uh -huh. And but she always identified with being African American. Her parents have very strong African American roots I guess you could say so yeah. she never really considered herself anything other than that. She's re I mean, she's really not white, so right. it's weird because it's like we fall into this sort of non-category, you know, mm -hmm. we're not, some people don't like to consider us black, white people certainly don't consider us white, <laughs> and so it was always kind of like, well, I don't know, I'm mixed, and I just kind of leave it at that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so, did you grow up in Buffalo? No, I grew up in uh, New Jersey, right outside of Princeton, mm -hmm. so I grew up in a very, a relatively diverse area. Oh, that's cool, I yeah. didn't, I grew up. Well, I went to all white schools, I should say. Yeah. Predominantly white, you know. Yeah. There, were, white there weren't there. a lot of, of African American. Well, there were a decent amount, I guess. My neighborhood, it's South Brunswick, New Jersey. It's very interesting. We have a lot of um, Indian, Pakistani, Afghani people in my town, randomly. Not really mm -hmm. sure why. Just where they ended up. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and, you know, some Hispanic, some black, lots, you know, predominantly white, but it's suburban New Jersey. So did you have friends of all different races? Yeah, I had friends of a lot of different races. Um, I didn't really, I guess, hang out with a lot of African American kids in high school because the ones that I really knew tended to succumb to that whole black thug stereotype, which mm -hmm. generally turns me off, so yeah. I just didn't really associate. I mean, I had some friends who were black, some friends who were white, some friends who were Asian, some friends who were whatever. So I didn't, you know, I don't really care as long as I like you as a person, right. to, you know, as long as your personality is, right. you know, obnoxious to me, I don't really care. Yeah. One way or the other, what you are. So. Um, I always sort of felt like what was hard for me was feeling too white to mm -hmm. be with black kids because well, yeah, exactly. I, I was told like, you know, like my mom sort of taught me the one drop rule. Mm -hmm. So it was like your dad might be white, but you aren't. But you're black. Yeah, right. and so I was like, okay, okay, I'll be black, I have to be black, I have yeah. to be black, and then I felt like I'd get around a group of black kids and, and like, they're looking at you like, like, what are you doing you here? Don't count. You talk funny, and yeah, you look and at I your hair. Like, I heard, well, you don't really count as a black person. You don't really count. And I don't think it's because I'm light-skinned. I think it's because I don't succumb to that whole black person stereotype, which I think is sad. I think that that's what being black means, and I think being black means so much more than that, you know? Yes. I had white people tell me I, I don't count as being black, and black people tell me I didn't count. And I'm like, well, what, what is the qualifying attribute, you know? What, right. at what point do I become black? Like, do I have to run around calling everybody nigga? Like, does that, is that what right. makes me black? Right, if my hair was in cornrows, Yeah, exactly, because be I'd happy? really rather not, you know? <laughs> like, I just, it's not really my thing. And they should rather not, too, in my opinion, because that exactly. is not what being black should the definitive point of being black is if you Not listen to this music and you talk like this exactly and you and you dress this way right I, you know it's whatever like whatever. it has nothing to do with anything <laughs> yes and like that's kind of why I want to do this because I I can't think of any way you know, not like I feel like it's my responsibility, but I just think in like sharing our experiences. No, I think it's important. Like I we think, could. Like, I think mixed should sort of be its own category. You know, it's all inclusive category. If 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 people feel the need to put labels right. on things, I mean, like, let's have no. Yeah, it would be great if no one needed a label. But I think you know, without having to say, oh, I'm this and this and that. You know, I'm mixed, and that should you know whatever. Right. I mean, I feel like more and more people are a mix of something or other, even if it's right. not with black, it's with Asian or, you know, whatever, and 
you know, nobody asks nobody asks them. Nobody asks a white person, <laughs> what are you? You know, exactly. They don't ask you whether you're German or you're French or you're Polish. You know, they just assume that you're white, and that's good and that's enough. enough. That's and that, but that's weird. You know where you, know? you are then. If you're white, then you're, weird. you're good at the top. And I get the sellout thing, you know, a lot. Because my father, although very dark skinned, he grew up in Jersey City, so he grew up in a very black neighborhood. Um, he went to private school his whole life and put himself through the University of Pennsylvania. Wow. So people told him his whole life that he was a sellout, you know, because he didn't, he talked, he, he got an education, he spoke like yeah. he was educated. And his argument was, which I always, I, I've adopted a sort of my mantra mm -hmm. because I think it's really profound is that, you know, he like, you know, people would throw around, oh, Martin Luther King and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, well, you know, Martin Luther King, his I have a dream and he wanted, you know, all African American children to have the opportunity to be educated. And so many more African American children are educated now, even then when he was in school. Mm -hmm. So why would we want to talk like we didn't get an education? Why would we want to act like we haven't been educated? Wouldn't we want to prove, you know, like, hey, we can be intelligent people too. We shouldn't be, it should, there shouldn't be this difference. It shouldn't be like talking black. There should no, there should be no such thing as talking black. Yeah. Should, people should just be speaking English, <laughs> you know? And I think that's so true. Like, you know, you hear so many people go on and on about their black pride and their, you know, but they're, they're digressing into stuff that we should, you know, no one would be proud of. Yeah, no one would be proud of. We'd be st we're stuck back here, and nobody wants to. Moving forward isn't necessarily talking like a gangster and you know carrying around a gun. Like that's not moving no. forward. That's just perpetuating the really horrible vision that people have of black people. When you know this percentage of black people are it's actually like that. like that. So it's just. And I think it's Martin silly. Luther King Jr. would be kind of sad yeah, to be, be, like, at this and be like, look at how many people are educated, <laughs> and look at what people still think. Exactly. On, you know, large. This is these are generalizations, but what people think mm -hmm. the African American is, and like you said, nobody's asking white people what are you, yeah, and exactly. they don't have to say I'm Italian or Irish or German. Yeah, just so white. do we really <laughs> want to say African? Like, because I often say black, mm -hmm. and sometimes people ask me why don't I say African American, and I'm like, well. It takes longer, and yeah, it's true. It's because <laughs> like I just kind of don't think that's right. That to me is like evidence that we are kept separate. Mm -hmm. Because you yeah. know, my dad's not going to be like, "Well, I'm Irish and Welsh and yeah, exactly. Or, you know, just, I'm an American. Why can't that? And be so are we. I'm an American. And that's you know, <laughs> and I think here, our cultures citizen. together are America. There's no America without whites and there's no America without blacks and of course everyone's welcome but I really think that's the foundation of the country and maybe why we're having some problems because we haven't fixed that broken foundation. Amen. <laughs> so I have thoroughly enjoyed talking with you. Yeah, yeah, this and, is fun. Uh, perhaps I we can like continue this. this I'm so glad you don't know how, like, from the first day I saw you here, we're at the gym, people. <laughs> like, oh, uh, <laughs> maybe Monday I'll ask her. Yeah, and I get yeah. so scared. <laughs> but no, thank yeah, you. I think know. it's important to, like, get this message out. Because I think a lot of people, my boyfriend's white, and, you know, he was always kind of like, well, you know, he asked me, he's like, well, how do you, he's like, how do you associate, he's like, you know, what do you, he's like, because, you know, you don't, to me, like, I don't really listen to rap music often, mm -hmm. and I don't, whatever. And he's like, you know, he's like, so you don't, fit into the stereotype, but you know, how do you identify? And you know, I told him, well, you know, I identify with being a black person. I consider myself a black person. Yeah. Cause I'm, I, I'm not a particularly militant black person. I'm not a particularly hip hop black person, but I am a black person. I know my history, you know, yeah. I know where I came from and I know, I know what being black means to me. So, you know, I think it's important to educate other people, you know, I mean, he's technically mixed. He's half Egyptian and half a mixture of Caucasian. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, he's, he's a mixed person too. And he's like, yeah, I never really considered myself mixed. He's like, you know, I just kind of identified with being white. And he's like, it's interesting to, to think about incorporating the other half of, of what you are into being who you are. And yeah. so I think that's important, not just for, you know, African Americans or black people or being half Hispanic, being half, you know, I think it's important for everybody. For everybody. Absolutely. So. Well. Hopefully we'll pave the way. Are. Embrace all of who you are. Because, yes. you know, it, it, that's what made you you, you know? Right. Whether you like it or not, that's what made you you. Exactly. So, so stand on the whole truth, not half. That's what I say. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> So thanks a lot, Lauren, for granting me the interview. I had a really good time talking to you. I hope everybody liked it. Thanks for watching.